Welcome to your last lesson on cells. This is your preview to chapter 10, lesson five, which is about how cells make more cells. Way back in the beginning of our unit, we looked at cell theory, and the first rule was that all living organisms are composed of cells. If it is alive, it is made of cells. End of discussion. The cells, the basic level of organization in all organisms is uh, rule two in cell theory. And basically it means that um, there are parts that are smaller than a cell, but those parts by themselves cannot make anything that's considered alive. Uh, the cell is your basic building block of all living things. And then finally, we come to this week's topic, which is all cells come from pre-existing cells. If you remember, it was Vircha who gave us that. Uh, he probably ripped it off from somebody else, though. The uh, premise of this lesson is to show you exactly how all cells come from pre-existing cells, how cells make other cells. So in order to uh, a, for a cell to make another cell, it has to divide. It has to split in two. Uh, this is one of the uh, rare cases where the words division and multiplication mean the same thing. So cells multiply, they make other cells by dividing themselves or splitting themselves into two. So cell division and cell multiplication mean the same thing. Either way, this process is called mitosis. So why is it important for a cell to be able to divide? Uh, this week, we are going to look at a uni unicellular and multicellular organisms and the different reasons why each of them needs to divide. Uh, the basic answer, though, is for someone like us, all of us, every single one of us, started off one cell big. We were microscopic. We were one cell big. But now we're... Uh, we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 10,000 trillion cells. That's a lot. So how did we get all of these cells from just one single cell that all of us started out as? And that is by cell division or mitosis. This lesson is going to focus on the stages of the uh, cell multiplication or cell division. It's done in these phases here. And as you can see in this pie chart, the overwhelming amount of time for a cell's life is in a phase called interphase. And we'll go into detail about what goes on in interphase. Then we have to be able to recognize the stages of mitosis, which are the four smaller wedges, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So let's begin with interphase. Interphase is when a cell is growing and developing. So at the very beginning of interphase, the cell has to grow to full size uh, because a cell came from another cell uh, by that cell splitting in half, the cell is half sized. So at the very beginning of interphase, the cell needs to grow and develop uh, to full size and make sure all of its organelles are full size as well. Then the overwhelming majority of time for a cell is just the cell doing its job. Uh, when a liver cell is producing liver cell things or a uh, brain cell is working um, uh, as a neuron cell, it's just doing its job. So um, that is all during a phase called interphase. At the very end of interphase, but it is still part of interphase, the organelles duplicate. Uh, if the cell is going to split um, and then divide into two cells, well, the the two baby cells need to have all of their organelles. So all the organelles need to duplicate uh, towards the end of interphase. And then finally, at the end of interphase, uh, DNA is copied and the chromosomes are duplicated. So chromosomes uh, are long strands of DNA and they are broken into bands or sections. Each one of these sections is called a gene and controls one or more traits. Uh, we're, uh, yeah, <laughs> there are going to be four words that start with the letter C, and our job is to keep them all straight, and scientists who named them didn't make it easy. So, chromosomes, our first word that starts with the letter C, chromosomes are going to be completely duplicated. So, all the chromosomes inside the nucleus of a cell have to make a copy of themselves. Then they... Um, 
because you now got double the amount of chromosomes inside a nucleus, it gets very, very crowded. So they have to coil up and twist themselves up to be very, very tight to take up less space. This is called a chromatid. Uh, so that's our second word that starts with the letter C. So chromosomes uh, duplicate, and when a chromosome coils up very, very tightly, it's called a chromatid. The pairs of identical chromatids, uh, because remember all the chromosomes were copied, so the ones that are the same um, are going to pair up and link together, and for reasons I cannot explain, I wasn't at the meeting, scientists decided to call these things chromosomes again. So the word chromosome can mean a single strand of DNA, or it can mean two chromatids joined together. They are joined together uh, in as an X shape, and that part where the two uh, chromatids join together is called a centromere. That's our third word that starts with the letter C. So in picture form, on the left we have the original chromosome. It makes a copy of itself, and then it begins to scrunch up even tighter. So now it's called a chromatid. The two chromatids that are matches link together in an X shape, and that is called a chromosome again. So a chromosome can either be a single strand of DNA on the left or two chromatids joined together at a central mirror, um, as you can see there on the right. Again, I cannot explain why they did this. It would have been fantastic if they had called it anything else. All right, so chromosomes, the X-shaped chromosomes, uh, have uh, two short arms and two long arms. So the X isn't exactly symmetrical. And um, as you can see, one half of an X-shaped chromosome is called a chromatid. So two chromatids joined at a centromere make a chromosome. All right. Next up, we are going to look at the four uh, stages um, that a cell uses to make a copy of itself. So if, if you remember at the beginning of interphase, the cells grew to full size. Then in the middle of interphase, the cells were doing their job. And then at the end of interphase, the cells made copies of everything inside so that they could split. Now we are ready to split. And so we get to our first phase called prophase. Prophase is the beginning of mitosis. Uh, in order for this to work, the nucleolus uh, and the nuclear membrane, nuclear envelope, whatever you want to call it, have to disintegrate. Um, in order for things to be uh, split up, moved around, the um, nuclear membrane wouldn't let that happen. So that's got to go away. So the cell just disintegrates its own nuclear membrane and the nucleolus doesn't have a job to do for now. So it just goes away. In an animal cell, but not a plant cell, in an animal cell, we get a brand new organelle. We've seen little bits of it in other diagrams. Now it's time for us to finally talk about it. And that is our fourth word that starts with the letter C, centrioles. Centrioles are pairs of cylinder-shaped bodies found in the cytoplasm of most eukaryotic organisms other than plants. So plant cells don't form centrioles. During uh, cell division, the centrioles move apart and they uh, form what are called spindle fibers, long sticky threads that grab onto things and move uh, uh, objects around inside a cell. The job of the spindle fibers is to um, kind of distribute everything around. So in di on diagrams, they look like this. They are nine groups of three tubes and they... Um, out of those tubes come long spindle fibers or sticky threads that grab onto organelles and chromosomes and move everything around during mitosis. So back to prophase. Prophase is the beginning of mitosis. The nucleolus and the nuclear membrane disintegrate and centrioles move to opposite sides of the cell. Spindle fibers begin to stretch across the cell. So the cell on the inside looks kind of like a mess. For ease of diagramming, we are going to um, kind of ignore all the other organelles. They are there, 
um but it would just be entirely too crowded to kind of show you what's going on so for now we're going to do an imaginary cell that only has three chromosomes so uh, as you can kind of see uh the nuclear envelope or nuclear membrane has disintegrated it's just kind of floating around as pieces of uh, lipid bilayers and the spindle fibers are coming out of the centrioles which have moved to two opposite sides of the cell and the X-shaped chromosomes, which are uh, two sister chromatids joined to the centromere, are kind of in the middle. And um, in this diagram, you can see that the spindle fibers from the centrioles are starting to grab on to the X-shaped chromosomes. All right. Next up is what's called metaphase. In metaphase, um, all of the uh, pairs of, of chromosomes are lined up completely in the in the center of the cell. It's the most organized of the of the phases. The centromeres, which are the where the X shaped chromosomes are joined, are now attached to um, both centrioles. So metaphase is always kind of recognized by everything being kind of lined up nice and neat. And each centromere, that part that joins the X. Um, has a spindle fiber on each side of it. And what is going to happen next is that the centrioles are going to begin uh, reeling in their spindle fibers, and that is going to rip the X's in half. That is for anaphase. Anaphase is when the centromeres split. Um, so the spindle fibers pull apart each half of the chromosomes, and because they're, they're still coiled up tightly, but they're no longer joined as an X shape, we have to call them chromatids again. So these chromatids um, have been split apart. So this and this over here uh, used to be, you know, an X shape. Now they're half of an X and they're being pulled to opposite sides of the cell. And we also notice that the uh, part of the cell in the middle, the cytoplasm is starting to pinch closed because the cell is getting ready to split. The, um, Last phase is telophase, and in telophase, the sp spindle fibers have done their job, so they just kind of dissolve and disappear. The chromosomes uncoil, so the chromatids uncoil. Now they're called chromosomes again, but now they're the single-stranded chromosomes, and it's time for the cell to protect all of the chromosomes, and so a nucleus reforms. And we can see the chromosomes are inside a nuclear membrane again, and the cells really starting to split. The division of the cytoplasm happens, so we actually get a, a complete uh, separation of the two cells, and the cytoplasms are completely separated by a new cell membrane, and we have two uh, what are called daughter cells. Two new cells have formed. They're half-sized, so it's time for us to go back uh, to the very beginnings of, of um, interphase, and they have to grow to normal size again. That's it. Try to keep it short and sweet. Uh, read the pages, answer the questions, check in with me. You know what to do.